Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today, I'm going to share with you guys an interesting way on how to render caustics. So here's my screen. And uh, as you can see right here, um, I'm rendering a diamond like with uh, caustics on it, like which reflects it onto the table. And I purposely put the table to black colors so that we can see the caustics clearly. So certain people couldn't get it, like especially newbies. So here's how, and then this is very simple. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So first of all, I have a scene like uh, here, here's the diamond. And then uh, for the diamond object, if you want to follow the tutorial, you can just go to a 3D sky. You can go to here, a 3D sky model. And you can look for like say diamond. And uh, click on the free section. But firstly, uh, you need to register a free account uh, to get uh, some free models that you can use. So you can go all the way down. Yeah, uh, this is this is it. Okay, this is it. Okay, so so you click a diamond and then you go for the first page, and this is the model that I'm I'm using. So you have some ba basic free setups. Okay, the ray and all. All right, so. So I have this uh, model right here, and um, first thing first, you need to create a simple table. Okay, so so we're getting the table. You can get it from here as well, uh, or you can just use any of the cylinder that will do. So if you want to follow exactly how I did it, just go to table free. Actually, you should look for a coffee table somewhere in the in the scene. I guess you can just go through it. Okay, see so which you can actually pick which of the, the models that you, you like the most, and then you can just go for it and download. Okay, so I'll leave it up to you guys like to choose which one you prefer to, to use it for your uh, props. Okay, after that, and then uh, the, the rest are pretty simple. So let's look into the setup. And a lot of people that uh, they're trying to get caustics, but they, they still couldn't get it. So the first thing, of course, you have to choose V-Ray. And then uh, you go into like GIs, like most of the people will just turn on caustics, like tick and check here. But somehow the caustics doesn't really show up whenever you're rendering um, from here. So th there's a trick, like simple, simple tricks. And it's just a thing that you need to turn on. So let's look into the material. So first of all, we go to V-Ray and um, we don't really have to change anything from here. But for me, I'm just going to change from progressive to bucket. So I prefer to use bucket like it, it shows me the the results straight away instead of showing me that the kind of like a dotted and you know, like in progress kind of a results like uh, bit by bit. And then I don't have to change anything from here and um, for image filter I'm just gonna choose VB line cost filter all right and then uh, in GI I have tr I have tested like a few settings before like it's either using irradiance map or light cache but um, personally I, I use this like to, to just to get a, a quick render so it renders uh, faster by using the settings uh, of brute force brute force Okay, and then uh, nothing else. Okay, that's it. All right. Okay, so let's go on to here. So if you look into material editor, so there are a bunch of stuff right here. So let me clean up and uh, show you. So for the table, I'm just going to choose this and pick from here. All right. And this is the default material that it brings together whenever you, whenever you download the, the the models, okay, the texture, the material. But I kind of decided to disconnect. So this is the original uh, texture that linked to here, to to show that this is a wood. But because I wanted to make it uh, 
more obvious on the caustics so I kind of uh, disconnect the texture from the material so it, it goes like total black and then as for the diamond I'm just gonna pick from here that you can see like it's um, a reflective uh, class material so which comes by default so the only thing that you have to do is turn off this okay so make sure you turn off the shadows okay turn off effect shadows so if you didn't if you didn't turn off this you won't be able to see your caustics okay so let's uh turn that off as well okay so by default this is not on all right and uh, let's go ahead and and render this and for the lighting i'm using a v-ray sun okay so i cr i go to here lightings and I choose a V-Ray and I choose a V-Ray Sun and then I click and drag to create uh, a V-Ray Sun and of course like you can put any position that you like and uh, whenever you create a V-Ray Sun okay let me just do it again to show you guys and then let me clean up whatever stuff that we have here so by default it's it's clean all right I'm just gonna go to V-Ray Sun I go to top view T for top and then I'm just gonna put my light like this okay so would you like to automatically add the very sky environment map yes right click and rotate back so I'm gonna put my stuff here and I'm gonna put my target right here okay and also under the environment you have to turn on V-Ray Exposure. Make sure you turn on V-Ray Exposure. Okay, because without turning this on, the whole scene will be overexposed, like a really, really, uh, like a lot, like too bright. So we have light here, and then you don't really have to set anything here at the moment. So you can just go ahead and, and zoom in and render. Let's have a look. Okay, so voila, <laughs> you get the caustics. Okay, and that's pretty quick. And by the way, I'm using Ryzen 9, Ryzen 9 with uh, a 3080. So I'm not sure about your specs, okay, but uh, to me, the brute force was kind of quick. Okay, and if you if you prefer to do not have such a a sharp edge shadow you can go with increasing the size multiplier so let's say you, you can increase it up to four and uh, let's have a look again like a quick one so you can turn this on so that whenever you move your mouse cursor over that it will render this okay slightly blurry blurrier like uh, compared to before okay escape all right so let's look into the settings of uh, caustics so if you if you go to here so we're just gonna remain like this brute force and then right here we have like photon map like world so uh, you can go with photon map and then for the max photons by default it's 60 as well as I remember but I kind of pump it up to 100 or probably at most like you can pump it up to 200 and it should still giving you some some nice like smooth results so if we go you know like uh, below like this and this is by default one and uh, let's click render so you should see less okay and then it's noisier compared to 100 Okay, so because the, the effect is so little, I'm kind of, I go here and pump it up to 50. But 50, it's actually, uh, you know, like based on the, after we added the V-Ray exposure, photographic. So if we didn't turn the, this on, one or two will be enough. 
Okay, so let's render again. So you could see that like it's noisy and then it is sharp, but it, it is actually showing like a lot of stuff. Okay, bright caustics that we, we got from here after a multiplier of 15. So if you want a, a smoother results of the caustics, you should, you know, like go to here and put it up to 100 or 200. So we can go with uh, 200 and now let's try that again. You can see that it gives you a lot smoother results. Okay, compared to, to before. So it actually depends like whether you, you prefer a crispier, noisier, I don't think like everyone loves noisier. <laughs> okay, so a crispier, you can kind of like tune, tune it like in, in betweens. So I think this was way too smooth. So that's why I, I put it a hundred uh, like points like right here earlier to get some, you know, like crispier, more details like out of the, the render. Okay, and let's uh, escape and cancel it. And the search distance is actually the distance, like how far the, the system, the caustics are searching and then like it will, you know, show like how much it, 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 it travels. Uh, the caustics that it, it appears on, on the areas. So five will be good. Okay, for a, a simple table like this. Okay, let's check the size of the table. Just a quick one. So whenever you, if you're building this on your own, make sure you check the size properly. Don't make it oversized or undersized. Too small or too big, I mean. So from here to here. So it's gonna like 78 cm centimeters. Okay, so which is, is good, All right? So because sometimes like, I know like for beginners, like they, they build the tables, you know, like they, they follow the same thing, but they forgot to check the size. So if you've got to check the size and the, the results might be different. Okay. So, and how to, like, because right now our, our acoustics is, is all white. So how do we get an interesting, you know, like spectrum, like, like the ones we have. So you like, we have some rainbow, you know, like RGB artifacts here. So which makes it looks kind of interesting. I don't know what was that, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, just ignore that. And um, it could be uh, because of the, the renders that, that caused that to happen. So how do we get this kind of interesting color out of the caustics? Here's the trick. And it's very simple. So you go to here, you go back to the material. Okay, material editor, and you just have to turn on app number. Okay, so once we turn on app number, let's have a look at the render again. Right, let's zoom in a little bit closer. And there you go. All right, we can see things like this. So if you think that the light is too bright, like it's, it's overexposed, you can reduce the brightness or the multiplier of the light. So intensity multiplier, like let's go down to 7.5 or probably even 0 0.5. And let's have a look again. Okay, so we're getting some more, you know, like RGB values back from the renders, but also it, it's making the whole thing darker. All right, so it is that simple. And then I'm gonna show you guys like um, another like comparison. So I'm, I'm rendering with brute force. Like this is the, the brute force version. Okay, this is the brute force version. And then there's a uh, Brute Force light cache version right here. So personally, I found that Brute Force light cache version have more reflective stuff around. But of course, like there's a light cache. <laughs> the calculation is different. 
Okay, but in comparison of, of two, like render time, like brute force, brute force is, is quicker. And we have another scene with different kinds of objects. So in this scene, I'm using a basic teapot. You know, like a basic teapot from from here and the same table. And I, I created a, a glass like with some liquids inside. And then we can take a quick look. So the lighting is the same. And take a quick look and see the difference that we're having whenever we have different density of the objects. So with this thickness of glass of uh, a normal like 1.5, you know, like an IR. So we're getting something that looks quite nice, okay, with this kind of curve, okay, uh, uh, of the caustics. As for the diamond, you guys already know, like it's spectrum caustics, which looks quite nice as well. So as for this glass with liquids, we're getting less caustics. Okay, even though we have a liquid here, and the liquid is casting the caustics right onto the spot. Okay, but the rest is less. Okay, so different thickness gives you different caustics effects. But of course, it also depends on the, the direction where the light comes from. All right, so uh, that's it. Hope you guys learned something today. Rendering caustics is, is not difficult at all. And with just a few simple clicks, and then you make sure you turn on the M number if you want nice spectrum colors of RGB on the caustics. Thank you so much, happy learning, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.